Hey guys, going on? Matt the Caveman Q here again from Paleo Problem Long Island from MattTheCaveman.com. And today's question is, what can we do about toxic mold exposure? Get out of here. So, similar to chronic Lyme, mold exposure is one of those esoteric concepts related to biologically derived toxins that is generally outside the realm of conventional medicine. While most people with healthy functioning immune and detoxification systems will only experience transient illness after sufficient exposure, there is a percentage of the population, potentially even one in four, that has variations in the HLA or human leukocyte antigen genes that make them more susceptible to develop a chronic systemic inflammatory response. Part of the problem with this recognition in the allopathic medical model is that in these people, there are many ways it can present, and it's simply not an easy fix. Mycotoxins, or the chemicals produced by fungi and molds, can be immunosuppressive, neurotoxic, and can potentially damage DNA and RNA. This can result in a variety of symptoms, including flu and cold-like symptoms, respiratory issues, headaches, fatigue, confusion, and memory loss, skin perturbations, and hair loss, as well as autoimmune disease. Honestly, given their ability to induce immune dysregulation, they can present with practically any symptom, and as such, are often missed or even misdiagnosed. So, if you seem to present with a host of abnormal symptoms that the doctor just hasn't figured out yet, it might be prudent to get both environmental and personal testing for mold. From there, you should look into getting genetic testing to see which HLA variants you have, and then looking at clinical biomarkers that could indicate a fungal infection. Okay, so now that we have confirmation, what do we do about it? Well, first of all, you need to get rid of the initial exposure. Make sure that it's taken care of professionally. Like we said, that mold can be neurotoxic. So simply trying to clean it up, just by touching it, you can have a host of problems. But in terms of actually recovering, your first step is gonna be, wait for it, wait for it, focus on your gut. Yes. The reason being, like we said, those fungi can turn down your immune system. They're taking out your resident beneficial bacteria. So, first off though, those fungi, they feed predominantly on sugar. That is their fuel source. You're going to want to go low-ish carb. You're gonna to want to avoid all refined sugar, as well as grains, legumes, and even in this case, potentially some safe starches and fruits, which I'd normally be okay with. If you are dealing with mold exposure or a fungal infection, you need to cut those out. From there, adequate fat intake from quality sources will be essential to make up your energy needs. But a particular focus should be placed on omega-3 fatty acid rich sources, such as grass-fed beef and of course, wild-caught fatty fish for their anti-inflammatory properties. But this is yet another case where a quality probiotic like Megaspore will be priority number one. Like we said, those fungi wreak havoc on your native microflora. That's part of the way they destroy your immune system. Megaspore will help recultivate a healthy microbiome and as such, help to modulate your immune system. But to be clear, the probiotic Megaspore is not to be confused with mold spores. So strains that are Megaspore are bacterially derived of the genus Bacillus. They are bacteria versus mold spores, which are fungal in nature. From there, consider natural antifungals like caprylic acid as found in coconut oil, as well as garlic, ginger, and cayenne to help potentiate that. Immune supporting herbs like echinacea, oil of oregano, and grapefruit seed extract can all be beneficial as well. Herbs like milk thistle and dandelion can help to support your liver and kidneys in the detoxification process. Adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, astragalus, ginseng, and rhodiola can all be beneficial in helping to mitigate the stress response. You may also want to consider things that will bind up those toxins like activated charcoal, bentonite clay, and diatomaceous earth. So unfortunately, like we said, this one has a lot of steps. But your biggest takeaways, stay away from mold. Totally get out of here. Get rid of the source of your mold exposure. That goes for all biotoxins, but mold in this case in particular. From there, focus on a low-ish carb diet, particularly focusing on a low sugar diet. Make sure you're getting an adequate omega-3 fatty acid as well as other quality fats. Get in a quality probiotic, that's number one. From there, look at different herbs that'll help with the stress response, that'll help with your liver and kidneys for detoxification that will help with actually biting the fungus and will help to support your immune system as a whole. So those are your biggest takeaways. But if you want more information on chronic Lyme, which is a similar biotoxin related chronic inflammatory condition, take a look at this video over here. If you want more information though on brain fog, which is a common result of mold toxicity, make sure to check out yesterday's video over here. 
If you want more information on Mega Sporbiotic, which is a great idea if you're dealing with biotoxin related issues, take a look at this video over here. And if you want some more information on how to bind up those toxins, check out this video on activated charcoal. So hopefully that helped you out though, guys. You know what to do. Like and subscribe down below. Share it with your friends. Head over to Instagram and Twitter and follow me at Mike the Caveman over on Facebook at Paleo Problem Long Island and of course over on MikeTheCaveman.com. That being said, get out of the mold, take care of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.